I could. Great. So as soon as you're set, All go right, ahead. Thank you. Good evening. Um, thank you for having me here. My name, as mentioned, is Margaret Abe Koga. I'm a, a city council member with the city of Mountain View, uh, serving my 10th year. Um, I did two terms, uh, then termed out and set out for two years, and then uh, and returned for a third term, um, and I'm half, halfway through that third term. So um, in terms of this issue of uh, Los Altos School District and enrollment growth and a new school site, um, I actually believe I'm the only sitting council member and between the school board and the council, LASD school board and council, I think I'm the only one who has been a part of this conversation from the beginning. Um, so I was um, asked to come uh, today, and thank you to Jill for letting me speak ahead of time. I have a council meeting tomorrow night, and we're talking about cannabis, which will probably take a long night. <laughs> and so I need to go home and prep. I have a lot of emails to return and whatnot, and I didn't expect to be here this late. So thank you for letting me go ahead of, uh, go ahead of you, Jill. But um, uh, I was asked to come and um, share my uh, um, perspective. Um, try to uh, share the perspective of the residents that I've heard from, um, mainly Mountain View residents. Um, those are the obviously the rep uh, residents that I represent first and foremost, although I do, um, having I served on the County Board of Education, so I do believe very strongly in educating all children um, of um, you know all backgrounds. So um, that's a very strong philosophy that I hold. So, um, and, and so I, I wanted to make, mainly try to answer any questions you may have. I, I was listening to the, um, the dialogue with the LASD trustees and um, some of those questions you may want to ask me because I might be able to um, answer some of those too. Um, just by way of historic background and how we, my perspective of how we came about to um, working with LASD on a new site. Um, this was back in about 2011, 2012, and actually Tammy Logan is right here, but it was her and Doug Smith who um, began to come to our council meetings um, and um, you know shared some concerns that we in Mountain View were allowing development um, as a housing development, um, and um, you know that is really by mandate. Uh, we have a jobs housing uh, imbalance, as you all well we all do, but um, our city has made an effort to try to address that by building more housing to meet, match the job growth in this area. And because of the development, increased de development, primarily in the San Antonio, what we call the San Antonio planning area, um, there was a, a concern that enrollment growth would um, would increase in the future in this area, and so there would be a need for a school eventually in this neighborhood. Um, so fast forward um, a few, uh, I, back then, I know the bond measure was being discussed. I actually signed on to supporting it. Um, I had talked about and was in agreement about using our parkland in lieu fees. Uh, those are the fees that we collect, um, as, as mentioned, when we have development. And instead of requiring the parks, um, some developers are allowed to pay these fees. Um, to use some of those fees to help in purchasing land if it was uh, uh, identified in the area. Um, as we have a joint use agreement with our Mountain View School District where um, the fields, the open space on the schools are parks after hours, we thought we could do the same. And so we were open to contributing parkland fees. And that's when I termed out, a new council came on, the conversation continued, and my understanding is that that um, staff, our staff began to work on this TDR, the transfer of development rights um, concept. And yes, it is very rare. Um, and frankly, this is the first time we in the Mountain View will be using this. And from my own perspective, this is not something that we will do, um, you know, as a, as a, um, a regular process. This is really for a special case like a public use, um, a school use. So that so we are making a special consideration in doing this. Um, 
fast forward now to this year, um, we've you know come to that point where we came up with the TDR scheme. <laughs> um, we came up with our parkland form, uh, formula. We were roughly estimating the cost of an acre. With $23 million, we were looking at the four acres of parkland at part-time use. Um, there was quite, there's question about the entire site that is now being looked at, the Coles and all the way to Paquetti. Um, Graystar, as you know, who had the Safeway, the old Safeway site, they came to us as a, um, a way to get approval of their project um, and offered to purchase two acres of land on the, that site um, to satisfy their park, park requirement, which would be about two acres and, and some change. Um, so that's why there's two acres that will be full-time park use um, for Mountain View, well, for the, for the residents. Um, and then uh, part of this, um, this uh, agreement uh, or partnership was that um, a member of our city council would serve on the uh, 10th site task force and I was the lucky one chosen to serve. And um, so I have participated in, in the process. And um, I, 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 I can, there's a lot of question or discussion question. Um, I personally had some questions about, you know, what do the residents in that neighborhood want? Um, I noticed on the task force, frankly, that there was no representative from um, what I would say, I guess the Del Medio area, um, I, I noticed that representatives from NEC tend to come from the crossings in the, these past committees that have been formed. And um, there's been, there was a lot of conversation, frankly, about the low-income English language learner community. And yet, um, I did not see representation from them on many of these committees. And so it was my personal interest to try to find out what the families were thinking, what, what their preference would be. Um, I will say, for, as Mountain View in general, I've heard from uh, quite a number of residents just across the city, and I, a very high percentage, you know, 90% would have said to me they want a neighborhood school. Um, but I really wanted to also just you know, tone in on what that Neighbor, the NEC neighborhood was looking at. And so um, I was asked actually to share some information. Uh, we have a Greater San Antonio Neighborhood Association, um, primarily the Crossings community. They put out a poll back in June, and this was when it was still the Safeway site. Uh, they had 66 responses. They have about 540 units, I believe, in the Crossings. And of the 66 respondents, um, back then 11% wanted an apartment community, 41% wanted a neighborhood elementary school, 17% wanted a bullish charter school, and 32% wanted Egan Middle School there. And this was um, right after I had proposed the idea of moving Egan as an option um, to the new site. Um, we also just recently on Saturday had a, a neighborhood meeting thanks to one of the parents um, with the Del Medio neighborhood. And we had about 40 folks come out, which I thought was a really good turnout. And I would say, um, you know, in all of the, the responses are varied, but my sense um, from that meeting and from, you know, what I'm hearing is for the future of this neighborhood, um, I think there is a strong agreement that a neighborhood serving school would be best. And that really, I believe, comes from the conversations we've had about growth in this area. And, you know, frankly, for me, that was how this was proposed to me, was that you're growing here, you need to help us. And so we as City of Mountain View have stepped up to help. And so I, there is a strong, I believe, a strong um, you know, sentiment in our Mountain View community that our, our children in that immediate neighborhood be served. And so um, I, I, that would, I, I would say that is pretty much um, you know, the prevailing sentiment um, from what I've heard. Um, I'll just leave it to there, I guess. And if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them.
Thank you. Uh, has anybody, does anybody want to speak on this topic who has not yet turned in a blue slip? It's okay. Come on up. Topic, so, yep, please. Okay. So, Ms. Logan? <laughs> Thank you again. Um, I was so glad to hear you acknowledge that we came in front of the city council at least, I think, eight years ago. Um, and I would say at that time, I was very discouraged by the reception we received. We were told, use eminent domain, and that was it. So when I left the board, to be honest, I had no dream that the current board was gonna be able to pull off this agreement with Mountain View. And I think it's fantastic that the city council and the um, staff members for the city council and also the LASD side have been able to make the agreements to extend the tax dollars so that I believe the district will be able to buy that property, they've said, at a lower price than people think um, and acquire something of you know, fantastic importance in the very long term. I think someone questioned a 30 year, 20 and 30 year thinking on a 30 year bond, which I don't understand. To me, when you do a 30 year bond, you clearly um, think in the long term and not in five or six years, but that's an aside. Um, as far as the neighborhood school aspect, I'm also happy to hear um, BCS board be very concerned about those children in that neighborhood and where they would go to school. Um, and I would offer that there should be a little research on some of that. I know that people asked about the financial impacts of the low-income children in that neighborhood. I believe from talking to um, Santa Rita and Almond PTA parents in the past, um, and I suspect it's true of the children at your school, that the per parent donation levels are significantly lower because they have about, I don't know, 10 or 20% low income children in those two elementary schools. That would affect a school that would be 40% low income children if it was in a neighborhood school. And we would not want to, I don't think, burden those children with an inability to provide the facilities and supplies and things that all the rest of the schools in the district are capable of doing. And then um, I think finally, the fact that BCS is so concerned and very good at fundraising, you've raised more than the L whole LAEF does for your school of 900 children compared to the 42 or 4,300 in the rest of the district. Um, you should consider opening it up as a neighborhood preference. You did that for Los Altos Hills. That's certainly something that could be asked to BCS, and I suspect that the county would clearly approve that, given that you've targeted a goal of serving lower income children, and that's where the lower income children in the district live. Um, I can't imagine that the district, I think that the district would be a loss, at a loss if all the low income children left, because I think that they add um, a lot to our district. But that's certainly something that could be done to make that more of a neighborhood school. And one final comment is I have to cut you off right there. And our next speaker is that you Kai tend Zhu, to become a neighborhood and school. Followed anyway. by uh, Jan Bear. Who is next? Oh, thank you, Councilman Miller, uh, Abby Koga, for being here. Uh, I think in the earlier discussion between our two boards, there was one point particularly missing. That was, it seems to me that both sides assume that Mountain View will chip in this $100 million, regardless which school will be put there. Uh, I only read from public source about the earlier June uh, 423 decision made by the Mountain View City Council to open the door for LSD board to investigate whether uh, they can put a new school there. But my understanding is that that decision only say there was no string attached as, as to how the school would be built. But it didn't say anything whether if bullies would be put there, whether the board will just still uh, approve that. And my understanding right now, the procedure is that even LSD uh, decide to put bullies board uh, police there or even a neighbor school there, they still need to re-vote on the issue. 
uh, if that's correct, I think this is procedurally um, just not very solid. At least they should make this decision earlier as to uh, whether if police is there, they would approve it. Otherwise, we are wasting whole all the time and all these people's time to discuss something that may never happen. So I think it's not wise for LSD to make a decision before uh, knowing whether Mountain View will approve in that case. And to add certain uh, complexity, uh, I, it has been publicly reported that as to that uh, 423 decision, there was at least one Mountain View City Council member may potentially have some conflict of interest. And uh, the APPC investigation is still up in the air. If, uh, if APPC rule against that city council, then he may have to recuse himself, and it became a deadlock as to that 4 to 3 decision. This whole thing will go down to toilet. Why are we wasting time on this before we know clear whether, this, um, whether to uh, move police there can ever happen? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jan Beer, followed by Wendy Yu. Everyone's really tall and I'm really sure. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you so much, uh, Congresswoman uh, uh, Margaret <laughs> Abikoga. Because I feel oh, like. I, I don't want that title. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, you're not Congresswoman. Right I'm, thank I'm you. watching the news too much. Councilwoman, I'm watching You're too using much. your time, is you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what? Your time. You're oh, using your time. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you so much for, for coming in. I know we've met before and taking the time. Um, I want to reiterate please that... Address, please address us, oh, actually. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I wanted to say thank you. But uh, yes. And I wanted to address the fact that, um, you know, uh, I'm a Mountain, Mountain View member, and I have spoken to a lot of different members of the Mountain View community, and um, there is a need and a want for a neighborhood school. Um, and I do strongly urge you to not only work with Los Altos School District, but also with Mountain View uh, Council to see what those needs are of Mountain View residents, because uh, this is only one piece of the, uh, the puzzle, and this is only one piece of the puzzle, and I do feel like Mountain View brings a lot to the table, especially with the funds that they're providing, um, with the park and lieu funds, as well as the TDRs that they're granting um, to have this space happen. So I really do implore you as um, all the boards to please work together to try to find out what the most uh, fiduciary, uh, fiduciarily responsible thing to do in that site is and to just listen to each other. And like um, uh, Ben said, you know, please Think about the kids and what's best for them. And you know, I hardly think that crossing traffic, 600 students one way and 900 students the other way, is a uh, is a good solution for anyone, and uh, especially not in Mountain View and and traffic. So, uh, thank you so much. But please, all work together to try to come up with a creative solution that works for everyone. Thank you, Ms. Beer. And the final speaker is Wendy Yu. And I I think I have your notes, right? <laughs> Um, thank you for having me. I have been a Mountain View homeowner for 16 years at the crossings, and I have seen a lot of things going on. Although I do not live there anymore, I'm still very active um, with, the email, with the email distribution list. I read every single email that comes out from that list. So I feel that I'm still very um, in tune on what's going on. So how happy are the residents at the NEC with the current school arrangement? Last time, the school boundary was redrawn for residents at the crossings from Santa Rita to Covington. Mm. People were very upset. One reason was because while most of the Covington students, after graduating, they would go to Blah, the students at the NEC, they'll go to Egan. There were a lot of concerns from the parents that, well, my, my kids won't be able to go to the same school with their friends anymore. Of course, current parents, when they bought their house, they already knew that this is going to happen. Of course, they would say, yeah, we, we okay with it, we like it, because most residents at the crossings are first time homeowners. And, and this is a lot better than, probably better than what they were used to and they are happy. But I think they are happy because they didn't know better. Um, Vlad, Vladimir previously has also acknowledged at the NEC meeting two weeks ago that 
it is harder for NEC families to get hurt by LASD because they don't have a neighborhood school. Um, so again, um, the problem is real. Residents from NEC wanted a school because they believe by having a school at the coast site, it will relieve the traffic situation. BCS currently has 900 students, but only 90 from the NEC region. Having more than 800 students, I mean families, driving into the neighborhood twice a day is unthinkable, and not to mention the other way. During the NEC meeting at the crossings two weeks ago, one parent, one parent very strongly object building a neighborhood school because they clearly said they did not want Covington to be closed. And when candidate Charlie mentioned, no, 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 having a neighborhood school here doesn't mean that Covington will be closed. We have no intent of closing that. That parent seemed to be very relieved after hearing that concern. So therefore, I want to mention that although it looks like maybe some of the um, people at NEC are very happy with the current situation, they may not want a neighborhood school built. Maybe they didn't know the uh, whole picture. Maybe they didn't know that building a neighborhood school doesn't mean one of the LASD school has to be shut down. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the public comment on this item. And uh, now we're going to start with Mr. Jakes again. And, uh, and we're going to go one at a time and, and ask such questions as we may have of the council member. Margaret, thank you for being here. I'll, I'll make my, my questions brief. You've actually answered a number of my questions already. Um, and I, I would just say that uh, if only the uh, school district and city boundaries were to align themselves, you wouldn't have a problem like this. So um, a, a couple of questions that I would like to ask is, um, given the fact that um, this effort to um, engage with LASD and, and grant the TDRs and, and work with LASD is only really benefiting a small community of the Mountain View City. Um, what is the reaction to the rest of the residents of Mountain View, which is, you know, I don't know what the demographic is, but I would imagine that the north of El Camino area, which is within the city boundary, is a pretty small area of, of Mountain View generally. So um, I have, I've heard from residents across the city. Um, I have been really pleasantly well, surprised, but not really honestly, um, that most uh, folks seem to be supportive of the idea of having a neighborhood school in this area and realizing the growth. Um, I think um, I mean, there's definitely some concern because the TDRs that are being sold are being transferred to other areas in the city that is, are also experiencing um, a lot of growth. And um, you know, the buildings on these developments are gonna be a few stories higher than originally thought. And so we are, to be frank, seeing some pushback uh, about that. But I think the overwhelming um, sentiment I feel is that Despite that, there still is a understanding of a need for the school here. Um, this area, the San Antonio area, um, has been historically deficient in park land space. And so that is of interest to um, the neighborhood and the community. And, and you, you may have heard of like on uh, conversations um, more recently at our council meetings and, and actually even at the task force meetings about an interest in having having whatever kind of, whatever school it is, having the facilities such as a gym or a um, you know, track and field space, and that would really be to um, serve this neighborhood that doesn't have all of that. And, and, and for me, it's been really um, impressed on me, the importance of having those types of am amenities um, in, as in, in, in this neighborhood and in other neighborhoods, we, we, we need to work harder to, to satisfy those dis um, interests. So, so in that sense, I think folks see this as a, a you know a potential win-win, um, and so um, and it's partially you know incumbent on us as council members to try to um, quell those <laughs> if there are concerns. Um, but overall, I, I think that our community has been very supportive of this concept. Good, thank you. And just one other thing would be. Um, does the city of Mountain View use the services of a demographer to predict population growth? Um, yes, we do. And um, we have um, numbers in terms of um, 
you know, even I, I think we may even have numbers in terms of um, you know school children children um, generated and and um, not as maybe not as precise as the school districts, but we do have some of those general guidelines. Um, I will say you know it did come up in this area currently we are building mostly one and two unit apartments. Um, that's been the trend the last four to five years based on the economy. Um, traditionally one to two unit apartments don't produce that many children um, but I, I have to say that you know I can't say that that's going to continue I think I, we're starting to see a change um, into more ownership development project proposals they're going to be smaller parcels but there are some you know older apartment complexes coming to the end of life in that area that could I could see redeveloping into ownership projects. So, um, you know, in terms of school growth, uh, children gro enrollment growth, it's hard to say. Yeah. But um, I, I think you know, it's a, it, we've seen this apartment trend, but it's starting to swing back to ownership. So that may produce more children. Thank you. Um, thank you. I had. <clears throat> Sorry, I had one specific question I'm trying to understand a little better. The, um, this proposal involves two acres being bought by Graystar for park. Yes. And I wondered, you'd mentioned, I think you described it as park use full time. I think you also mentioned that the city has joint use uh, agreements with the Mountain View Wisman School District to be able to use the facilities to use uh, so that uh, field space could be used by residents after, but by students during the day. Yes. Could you clarify what the plan is for those those two acres? Would that just be, would there be any access for a school at that site to actually use the park facilities during the school day? Or is that only public, ac uh, sort of not reserved for schools? Um, it, it would be like any of our other public parks. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have school children and field trips that come through our parks mm -hmm. and whatnot. So it's open to anybody's use. But um, I, I guess what, I, what the difference is is that there would be no restriction on use by other people. So for the school sites mm -hmm. right now, until 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. the public, you know, other folks are not allowed on the grounds of a school campus. But after three, they are. Uh, for a public park, it's mm -hmm. open from sunrise to sunset. Okay, that's helpful. So it's not like it's an ex so it's this is like parkland. It's not necessarily that uh, the school could say, right, we're going to have recess and gym and other things out, sort of using the using that park as Correct. a track and field during the day. Yes. Right. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you for clarifying. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Erring. Thank you, Margaret, for coming. Um, I had just had a few questions for you. Um, the first was the demographer information. Where could we find that information? Do you know? Um, it would be in our planning department. I'll have to go do some digging, but um, I could probably get that for you. Okay, I'd appreciate that. Um, and has the city done any analysis around the traffic impacts of the ch of the three options that were being considered by the 10th um, site, you know, mm -hmm. basically BCS, um, uh, Neighborhood School, and uh, Egan? Um, not at this, not yet. Um, we have traffic studies for the plan, San Antonio planning area based on our projections for development of housing or office, um, but not specifically for the school or the different school options. That will be a part of the EIR, the, 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 CEQA, the environmental impact report and CEQA process. So you're, you're not looking to try to do any of that analysis in advance of a decision around <coughs> what the city would do? Um, we haven't discussed that. Uh, in terms of our timeline, uh, currently um, this, the final um, agreement approval is scheduled for October 16th, so in two weeks. Um, and um, so uh, there has not been any traffic studies done um, in preparation for that meeting. And has the city talked about what they're going to do to mitigate these problems at all? I mean, it, so, so just to, 
having been through the whole process, having been at the old Bullis Prisma, having the open Gardner Bullis, and watching what I think was the assumption was that a lot of the BCS families would turn around and go to Gardner. One sure. family did. And so instead what happened is we had this transitioning, mm -hmm. and I'm interested in knowing whether the city has considered those kind of impacts. Well, I think that's actually been a part of the conversation as to what we think uh, the city council thinks should be on that site. And so, as mentioned by um, Mr. Kai, um, we did have a meeting in June, um, and it was part of the approval process for this whole agreement, but there, there was a discussion about whether we, as a city council, um, in light of our contribution to this, uh, um, this partnership, um, should require it to be a neighborhood school. So, um, you know, I would say uh, unanimously, our city council prefers it to be a neighborhood school, um, but there was a split as to whether we should make that a requirement or not, or just keep it as a preference, and that was the 4-3 vote. Um, I, I, I think that will be the good conversation again at the next meeting. Um, as mentioned, uh, we have a council member who is um, currently being um, investigated by the FPPC and may have to recuse himself. And so if that is the case, it, it, right now, if you take that vote from June, we're deadlocked, 3-3. Three, three. So um, that's really going to be our main discussion, I would say. Okay. Um, and there's other, there are many different configurations I personally have thought of, you know, if it's, let's say it's not a neighborhood school, do we lower our contribution amount? You know, there, there's, we could make requirements like perhaps that we say, you know, the school district has to come up with a transportation system for, um, I was thinking about mainly the Mountain View children who are now crossing El Camino to go to Los Altos schools, but perhaps it has to be a bigger transportation system for, like for instance, the BCS children coming into Mountain View. Um, so there's a lot of potential um, stipulations that the city council could place on this agreement. Okay, um, could you tell me whether the assumption around the use of the facilities outside of school hours is just the civic act and it would be after whatever the school is using the facilities or have you been discussing specific times in which you mentioned the three o'clock um, that the city would have use of these facilities? Um, I. As a council, we have not. Um, the city staff may have had some conversations. Um, I, I believe we will learn that at our next meeting. So um, just I think it's important to understand that BCS has the longest school day of yes. any of the schools, I believe. We have uh, activity starting as early as 7, 7.15, and we have them going till 5 o'clock at night, 6 o'clock at night. But definitely yes. the field space, if it's BCS, BCS there mm -hmm. would not be available if yes. it's the Civic Act. Um, I have heard that, and um, I, that sh would, to, in my mind, that would be part of the discussion and the agreement that we would reach. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aaron. Mr. Ying? So. Councilwoman Abby Koga, thank you for uh, coming tonight. Um, so, yeah, um, if given the sort of uh, confidential nature of what's going on between the district and um, federal, um, if you can't answer the following question, I understand, but I'm going to try and phrase it in such a manner that you can. Um, in order for so you mentioned that the the city is um, has agendized on October sixteenth, um, potentially taking action on the funding agreement of the the twenty three million dollars at Park and Luffy's. Is there was there a say let's call it a wish list of um, transaction details with respect to um, the district and federal that need to be sort of agreed upon or hammered out before the, the city is able to take action? And if yes, um, are you able to provide an update on how many of those or if all of them or if none of them have been satisfied? 
Um, I am not aware of where they are in terms of reaching agreement. Um, th th this is, a, this is agendized, but um, in all frankness, um, it's really up to the LASD um, board and, and whether they are ready to go on October 16th. Um, if they are not, we can certainly delay the, 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 the final um, vote. Um, so it's really up to them. Um, they are very clear. <laughs> <laughs> that we have this on our calendar, and I, I, I my sense, I, I, you know, from the conversations, I think we, you know, we all have an interest in trying to get this done sure. as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um, but to be frank, at this point in time, it's really up to LASD to reach agreement with federal and whatnot, and bring that forward to our council with a completed package for us to vote on. Um, and our real, you know, discuss our our decision making will be based on whether we accept that um, with uh, you know any stipulations as mentioned that's you know what the use is uh, what kind of facilities should be on there whether there should be some transportation considerations made so it's, frankly, it's open. I haven't discussed this because of our Brown Act. I haven't discussed this with my colleagues, but um, I, from past conversations and past meetings, um, we have discussed that there are maybe some other requirements that we will have. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Bryan. <clears throat> Hi, thank Hi. you for being here. Um, but I'm a proud 10-year resident of Mountain View, so thank Yay. you for all that you've done for the city. <laughs> uh, just a real quick question for me. There's been a lot of conversation uh, tonight around um, the expectations of growth in the NEC, when, given you're in the district, was curious to get your sort of insight into what you're seeing or thinking in terms of, again, NEC growth in the forthcoming years. Um, yes, so uh, again, um, we, this is what we deemed, we, we did a general plan update back in 20. 12, um, and this was an area that, um, frankly, the community came forward and said, we can see more development happen. So um, San Antonio Shopping Center, you know, was a rather sorry shopping center way back when. Um, then Carmel Partners and Merlone Geyer came in, and, um, you know, they proposed this mixed-use project, and that was the start of housing there. Um, as the economy increased, uh, it got better, um, job growth happened, um, this, I would say the community has been very supportive of us building more housing. So there has been somewhat of a shift to um, to um, not build as much office, but build more housing. And again, as I uh, mentioned, I would say the last um, four to five years, we saw a growth of um, an interest in, in de development proposals for apartment complexes. Um, but I would say in the last year or so, and you know whether it's tied to rent control or not, um, we are starting to see the uh, development re redevelopment proposals of older apartment buildings um, be t into townhomes, condos, and row homes. So I do expect that no knowing the neighborhoods and what types of housing units are currently there, that there will be some ownership housing as well. It won't be just apartments. So there will be some growth, I, I, I believe, um, in school population. Um, but you know, I would mention that already the the demographer and numbers that we were given. I think we already have 679 children in NEC um, already. Um, so. In my, I, from the numbers I see of you know what a school school size is, that would fill a school in itself. Um, of course, you know based on how you draw the boundaries. But if you were just to take NEC, you could fill a school, and, and so with more growth in the future, you probably would need a bigger school. <laughs> cool. Great. Thank you, Ms. Ra. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, my question was answered in the process, so I don't have any more questions. Thank you. Dr. I was going to say thank you, and my question was also answered. So I'm going to hold off. Our chairman, Mr. Hurd. Wait, 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 wait a second. I've got, I've got no further questions. It's a very thorough and informative presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we're going to go to uh, just our discussion up here. 
and any comments that, that we might have. Uh, beginning with Mr. Jakes. Um, Would you like a mic? I don't really have any uh, particular comments um, other than to um, once again thank Councilmember Member Koko for coming and for the City of Mountain View's willingness to engage in the project that um, is uh, right on the edge of your city. Ms. Waterman Roy. Uh, I also just want to thank you for coming tonight and staying late before a long <laughs> meeting tomorrow. And uh, you've given a lot of um, more context that really helps me think a little bit more about the um, the needs in the context of Mountain View residents and Northern Valley Camino st um, students and community members in North Valley Camino. So thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you as well. I appreciate your service on um, my city council and um, just encourage you to think about these issues. Um, I try to avoid going north of El Camino pretty much. I try to stay south because of the traffic issues sure. and I hate to see it further get impacted. Mr. Uh, I just want to thank you as well. I mean, I know these things um, can go late, but I've seen some of your city council meetings and they go much later. So <laughs> I don't, That's I don't what envy I'm your job. That's I'm preparing for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Uh, nothing more to add. Just thanks again for, for being here and thanks for all that you thank do for you. the city. Thank Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Joe, do you have any comments? Just a thank you. Just a thank you. No thank you. Thank you. So I'll thank you too and, and let you go in and really above and beyond coming to see us tonight and volunteering. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate Good night. It. All right. So so we're gonna we're gonna take a five minute